Oh, look at me. It's more irresponsible spending. Uh, okay, look, I did a video on getting 120 gigabytes working with DDR5. The results were kind of interesting. Now that video was focused more on the AMD platform, but it was such a headache that just for giggles, I also tried the Intel platform and it was a bit of a headache. So this video, we're gonna get two DIMMs running as fast as possible because there are new kits of memory available such as our G-Skill Trident Z DDR5 RGB. This is the F5-7200J344G16GX2-TZ5RK. 7200, CL34, 45, 45, 45, 115 at 1.4 volts. And, okay, this is a really nice system. This is my 12900K system. And this has got the MSI Meg Unify but this motherboard doesn't advertise OC support even for memory that fast. <laughs> Enter the Z790 Godlike. So, Z790 Godlike, a 13900K, no one in their right mind should upgrade from a 12900K to a 13900K, and a brand new FSP Group PCIe 5 power supply, because we're gonna need that when we use our Zotac 4090 to test how fast the memory being affects games, or not, as the case may be. But as we learned from the 128 gig video, it's only gonna be two sticks of memory, because good lord, the Intel platform can clear 106 gigabytes per second with two DIMMs. So the whole point of this is to set it up, take a look at the motherboard, and see how fast we can go. Now I've got all this set up in a fractal meshify case. I'm also rocking the, the MSI 360 millimeter cooler with the LCD screen. This is a really competent cooler. It does a really good job. It's not super expensive. MSI has customized the design a little bit. It's a pretty good setup. Now what's not a pretty good setup is you can kind of see from the side here, we've got my ketchup and mustard colors on the power supply. I'm not judgmental, I don't care. My power supply wires could be hot pink and I literally do not care. This is an older Corsair 850 watt TX power supply. We're gonna sub in the FSP group. This is a much, 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 much newer and much better power supply and and it's designed with the 4090 in mind. I think I'm really pushing things a little bit with the age of this power supply and the fact that it wasn't really designed with 4090 transients in mind. Transients meaning that the 4090 will go from not a lot of power to an insane amount of power in mere milliseconds. And that's kind of hard on some power supplies that aren't really designed for that. Power supplies of this era never really considered that. It's just owing to the really good build quality of Corsair that that happens to work. But FSP group, they make server power supplies. They're coming from on high down to regular ATX power supplies. So <laughs> I always like it when people that make server power supplies enter the, uh, the gaming desktop power supply enthusiast power supply area because they generally know what they're doing from an engineering standpoint. Just ah, add some RGB and then the gamers will buy it. That's exactly right. Do that. So the MSI Godlike motherboard series, they're always over the top. <laughs> They're over the top expensive, but they are going to be over the top in terms of your unboxing experience. This box just hefting it around, it feels like there's a cinder block in it. This motherboard comes bundled with the Envision dashboard. It's a four and a half inch full color IPS touch screen. The motherboard bundles a touch screen? What? It is PCI Express 5, it's a 26 plus two power phase delivery system, 105 amps, because they know you're gonna push that 13th gen to the limit. It also has seven onboard M.2 slots in case you're just a crazy person. Ding, ding, ding. Now, even though this is the godlike motherboard, there's not really a ton of PCI Express expansion slots like most boards this generation. However, this board does have onboard 10 gigabit ethernet. Yes, onboard 10 gig, you got it. We also have onboard two and a half gig. As you might imagine, this is an EATX motherboard. <laughs> it's wide. Look at that. It's a full metal back plate, plenty of clearance for your cooling solution. At the rear IO, we've got clear CMOS, BIOS flashback, and a smart button, which you can pick what that does. Two and a half gig ethernet, 10 gig type A, a 10 gig type C, 
Then we've got four Type A, all of which are 10 gig. And then we've got our 10 gig Ethernet, and then two more 10 gig Type A, and then our 40 gigabit Thunderbolt with mini DisplayPort in, our Wi-Fi 6E solution, and a full 7.1 audio setup, including optical SPDIF out. At the front edge of the motherboard, it's all right angle connectors. So our PCI Express auxiliary power, our 24 pin motherboard power, we have three four pin fan connectors, a digital RGB header, dual type C, dual 30 pin, and six six gigabit per second SATA ports. At the bottom edge of the motherboard, we have five four pin fan headers, a three pin water flow header, uh, two analog temperature sensor inputs, two USB 2.0 headers. That's great for internal peripherals that need USB connection, such as our MSI cooler, because I like being able to reprogram that LCD. A physical power and reset button, a BIOS toggle switch to pick which BIOS you want. The dash connector, front panel audio, analog RGB header, and another digital 50-50 header. I could, I could get a workout with this. As I implied, the accessory bundle with the motherboard is something else. Here we have our four and a half inch touchscreen. We'll take a closer look at that in just a minute. We'll come back to the accessory bundle when we get the build a little bit farther along. Our godlike motherboard is a little too large to fit in our fractal case. All we really got to do is take out the drive holder panel and then the motherboard will fit because it sits up a little too high. So it turns out this isn't really an EATX case. I made it work anyway by modifying the case. There's a little bit of a lip that's stuck up. I just, I bent it out of the way. So be sure to use an EATX case. But I also learned something else interesting. These rubber grommets, at least the one that was in the bottom of the case here, it's thinner on one side than the other, or it's cut different or something. Mine was actually upside down, so the thicker part was sticking up. It was also interfering with the motherboard going exactly where it needed to go, but I could flip the rubber grommet upside down and it worked fine. When you go to install your M.2, be sure you peel the plastic. It's a little paradoxical though because the uh, thermal material on the bottom edge, you know, there's a standoff there. So I guess it's for really thick double-sided M.2. Now I've yanked our old power supply, 150 watts. What's this madness? FSP group, high end. This is the Hydro PTM Pro 1200 watt, 80 plus platinum. And this is not my first build with this power supply. I was so impressed with it, I picked up another one. It is a long power supply, but it is fully modular. Cinder block power supply to go with our cinder block motherboard. Also includes a water cooling test plug, some Velcro strips, and a nice cloth bag with all the cables. We're gonna put all the cables in the case, remember? That's the level one pro tip when you're building. Put all your extra cables in the case with the power supply because you're going to lose the box. It's going to be gone. Warranty does not cover side stickers. Stickers should only be used once. California Proposition 65 warning. This product can expose you to chemicals including lead, which is known by the state of California, to cause cancer, birth defects, and other reproductive harm. Listen, I am willing to pay extra for leaded solder because that stuff is good. It's just that... This can never go into a landfill. It has to be buried with me so that it never seeps into the water table. Gosh, it even smells like a good power supply. <laughs> Eco, on or off? Comes off by default. And look, right there, PCIe 5 power right on the front. It's a tiny connector. Now do note if you're gonna get one of these power supplies, you gotta get at least 850 watts and on up in order to get the fancy cable. I'm honestly a little surprised the 1200 watt one doesn't have two, but eh, that's okay. It's more power supply that I can handle. Another thing I like about this power supply is that it has three CPU connectors. That's good for Threadripper. It's one of the things that I really liked about this power supply for Threadripper builds because there's usually the extra EPS 12 volt connector instead of using the PCIe style connector. And there's three motherboard connectors on this, so that works well. Practical cases have this one weird trick to make life a little easier when you're installing cables in close quarters. I find it's easiest to shove all the cables out the back and connect them and then deal with it that way. Ta da! Reasonably cable managed. Fractal's got the handy bracket for hiding our sins. Now if we wanted to, we could add our modesty panel back here 
covering all this. But I don't want to do that because we've got giant GPUs like the 4090, which would make inserting and removing those a little more difficult. So I'm not, I'm just going to put it in the box and store it. Done for me. Now the only thing left to do is to get our fabulous G-Skill Trident Z7200 memory installed. Take a look at our Ada 64 benchmarks and uh, play some games. Let's get it put in there. So you look at the game results for 1080p and you think, my gosh, this is incredible. This platform can deliver 108 gigabytes per second and it is an incredible uplift. It's, it's a record, at least here in the level one studios, in terms of Shadow of the Tomb Raider performance at 1080p. It literally has broken the record. There's no faster system that I've tested with this. And yet, that's not the whole truth. I mean, it is true that this is an obscenely fast kit of memory, very low latency, very high throughput. The Intel platform takes the crown there. The game performance here, across a relatively small sample of three games, at 1080p, the performance really is incredible. Borderlands, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and Horizon Zero Dawn, where it makes less of a difference. I've sort of carefully chosen these games because it's a, it's a decent cross-section for the kind of thing that we want to look at. And the story would end there. Most videos would end there. But I wanted to also show you 4K. Because at 4K, you're more GPU bound. And at 4K, with these three games, it's much less of a difference. It doesn't matter as much. So if you're playing a game competitively, and you want to be CPU bound, then okay, maybe the memory makes a bigger difference. But a lot of the time, those games are optimized for the processors that they're working on, and that really won't make much of a difference there either, because those games will also run on potato class machines. You don't need a 4090 in order to be able to do that. And I also don't think it's really reasonable that you're gonna run a 4090 and play Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 324 FPS. But if you do, this is the platform that can do it. And it is breathtaking, and I don't wanna take that away from it, but don't feel like you're missing out if you don't have the absolute fastest memory. You gotta find the sweet spot of what makes sense for your monitor, your monitor's refresh rate, what it's actually capable of, and the rest of your system. But if you wanna build the absolute fastest system, the G-Skill 7200 kit, I've never seen anything faster. It has set the record. I'm Wendell, this is Level 1. This has been a quick look at G-Skill's super premium memory. Signing out, you can find me in the Level 1 forums. Mm.